Welcome to Care Coordination and Interoperable Health IT Systems, Ensuring the Security and Privacy of Information Shared. This is Lecture A, Legal Aspects of Care Coordination. The objective for this unit, Ensuring the Security and Privacy of Information Shared, Lecture A, is to identify the federal laws and regulations related to protected health information that may be shared during the process of care. So first, let's examine the issue of privacy. Privacy is primarily a social value. It is not constitutionally protected, but there are laws that recognize a person's right to be let alone, as well as protected against physical or psychological invasion. In healthcare are laws and regulations that recognize the right to limit the disclosure of personal information. Confidentiality results from sharing private thoughts with someone else in confidence, i.e. communication between two or more parties. It generally stems from a relationship such as an attorney and client, the clergy and parishioner, or physician and a patient. The confidentiality pertains to information resulting from that relationship. Security, on the other hand, is protection of the data from intentional or unintentional destruction, modification, or disclosure. This can mean we are protecting it from a breach. This means we can protect it from the physical elements. This means we can ensure that it is only modified when it is legally allowed. Security is required for privacy and confidentiality. The overarching federal law that governs privacy and security of all health records is commonly known as HIPAA, the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. It has two main components. The Privacy Act covers all individually identifiable health data in any medium. The Security Act applies to all individually identifiable health data in electronic form only. HIPAA sets the minimum requirements for health data privacy and security. However, it only applies to protected health information, sometimes called PHI. Three conditions must be met in order for health data to be considered protected health information, or PHI. First, the data has to be created or received by a healthcare provider, a healthcare clearinghouse, or a health plan or insurance company. Second, it must be related to health, healthcare delivery, or the payment of healthcare delivery. Third, and finally, the data must identify the person, or it is reasonable to believe the information can identify the person. There are some important points related to HIPAA. Generally, the sharing of protected health information requires patient authorization or consent, meaning the patient agrees to the sharing of the information. The three main exemptions to this requirement are information sharing for payments, i.e. to insurance companies, treatment between different providers or operations, for example, within a healthcare organization, and care coordination, which qualifies as treatment. This means that protected health information can generally be shared for the purposes of care coordination. There are some types of sensitive information covered in later sections that require special handling. Other important Privacy Act requirements include the minimum necessary requirement. It's not imposed in any of the following circumstances. The disclosure to or request by a healthcare provider for treatment or when you are disclosing to the individual who is the subject of the information or their personal representative. If the disclosure is made pursuant to an authorization or to the Department of Health and Human Services for compliance investigation or other enforcement activities on their behalf, 
or if the user disclosures are required by law or it's required for compliance with HIPAA transactions rule or other HIPAA administrative simplification rules. In essence, the minimum necessary says only the protected health information needed to accomplish the intended purposes of the use disclosure or request can be released. So, for example, the insurance company can only request the PHI that they need to pay for the treatment that they are responsible for paying for. They could not request PHI for treatment they are not paying for. We also have the Privacy Practices Notice. Each covered entity that is subject to HIPAA, with certain exceptions, must provide a notice of their privacy practices. It requires that the notice contain certain elements. In essence, it has to describe the ways in which the covered entity may use and disclose PHI. It must state their duties to protect privacy, provide a notice of privacy practice to their clients, and abide by the terms of their current notice. The notice must also describe individuals' or clients' rights, including their right to complain to the Department of Health and Human Services and to the covered entity if they believe their privacy rights have been violated. The notice must include a point of contact for further information and for making complaints to the covered entity. Covered entities must act in accordance with their notices. The rule also contains specific distribution requirements for direct treatment providers. The rule also contains specific distribution requirements for direct treatment providers, all other healthcare providers, and health plans. Healthcare providers especially need to make a good faith effort to obtain a written acknowledgement. However, if the client or patient refuses to sign a privacy practices notice, the healthcare provider simply needs to document that. So we have two types of special information that we are going to discuss. While the Privacy Act and Security Act of HIPAA pertain to most individually identifiable patient information, these other types of healthcare records are subject to special laws and regulations. And this is information specifically related to drug, alcohol, and substance abuse, as well as genetic data and HIV information. They all have separate requirements. The two main laws governing drug and alcohol abuse information are the Drug Abuse Prevention, Treatment, and Rehabilitation Act, as well as the Comprehensive Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism Prevention, Treatment, and Rehabilitation Act of 1970. These regulations related to drug and alcohol abuse restrict disclosure of patient-specific information. Specifically, these laws and regulations prohibit the explicit identification of a patient's presence or past presence in a facility. Any type of disclosure, including for treatment or care coordination purposes, usually requires patient consent or a court order. The only exceptions would be when someone's life is in danger or as might be required under other laws. With the force of law are regulations of the federal government, including Title 42 of the Code of Fed Federal Regulations, Part 2. With the force of law are regulations of the federal government, including Title 42 of the Code of Federal Regulations, Part 2. Under this regulation, records of patients treated for alcohol or drug abuse might only be disclosed with patient's written authorization or without authorization to medical personnel for bona fide medical emergency, for research audits and program evaluation or in response to a court order. And as you can see on this slide, this regulation does not pertain to general medical facilities unless they have a specific substance abuse treatment unit. Genetic information is governed by the Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act, or more commonly known as GINA. Genetic information is also considered as a special class of information. Specifically, insurance companies, employers, and labor unions are limited in how they can use genetic information. For standard healthcare purposes, such as healthcare delivery and care coordination, 
Genetic information is subject to the same laws as health information. Each state in the United States also has state laws around privacy and security of health information. The question often becomes, what do you do when there is federal versus state laws and they are not the same? It's important to realize that the requirements of HIPAA are the floor. They are the minimum of what is required. Many states can and often do have more stringent requirements. The legal precedence for federal versus state when it comes to PHI is given to whichever law, federal or state, provides the most rights to the patient. For example, HIPAA requires that the healthcare provider respond to a request for PHI within 30 days. In some states, that time to respond from the healthcare provider to the patient after a request for information might be as little as two weeks. And in that instance, state law would have precedence because it provides more rights to the patient in terms of getting a response in a very timely fashion. Conversely, there are some state laws which might say that the provider can charge the patient to come in and review copies of their own information in the healthcare facility. This is not allowed under HIPAA. In that instance, the federal law would take precedence because it gives the patient more rights related to their PHI. This concludes Lecture A, Legal Aspects of Care Coordination of Unit 10, Ensuring the Security and Privacy of Information Shared. In summary, many different federal and state laws govern specific types of patient health data. Care coordination is considered treatment and providers are allowed to share PHI for purposes of care coordination.